Uh, nope. No, no, no. We are not running a soup kitchen here. You need to leave now. I'm just here for the sermon, ma'am. If it's not any bother. It is a bother. You stink and you need to go now. Is everything okay over here, Sandra? No, everything is not okay. He just came barging in here, stinking up the church. I was just hoping to hear you preach, Reverend. Oh, okay. And I'm the Pope. <laughs> uh, I think there's a way to work this out for everyone. Don't tell me you're actually falling for this act, Reverend. Act? Just two weeks ago, the church down by Oak Ridge was vandalized and robbed by street thugs posing as worshipers. I'm telling you, this guy is nothing but trouble. Not looking to rob nobody. Mm-hmm. Sandra, this man has just as much of a right to be here as you do. Really? Did he donate thousands of dollars to help fix the church roof? Well, no, No, but... right. That was me and my friends. Oh, wait, I know. He helps organize the Christmas church parade every year. Ah, wrong. Once again, that was me. Sandra. Don't Sandra me, Reverend. I am a parishioner who gladly gives my weekly tithing and then some. And it's not so I can sit next to some foul-smelling street rat. If he stays, I go. And I guarantee you, the rest of the congregation will follow. It's okay, Reverend. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I'll just be on my way. Go on. You think I can borrow this? I promise to bring it back. Go right ahead. Thank you, Reverend. You know he's just gonna end up selling that, right? God bless you. God bless you, thank you for coming. Spare some change. Spare some food. <laughs> Get a job. Go. Did you get us some food? How about medicine? I'm sorry, everyone. I didn't get any food or supplies today. We appreciate you trying. <laughs> but I didn't come back empty-handed. You said you wanted to hear a sermon. And by gosh, you're getting a sermon. Matthew 25, verses 35 and 36. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. For I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Glad to see you're still using that. Sorry for keeping it this long. I was planning on bringing it back soon. Keep it. That's not why I'm here today. Oh. And why are you here? I took up a collection in church yesterday, and I thought you folks might be able to use this. You have no idea what this means to us. Great. Everyone, help yourselves. Well, this is quite the flock you have here. They're good people. Well, how did they all wind up down here? Lots of reasons. Jim lost his family to a car crash about three years ago. The accident left him with a bad leg. That meant he couldn't work in the warehouse anymore. Sarah's been here longer than me. She used to be addicted to pills. Messed her life up real bad. She lost everything and everyone. But with the help of the Lord above and a lot of support from the good folk right here, we got her through it. Good. Tracy's husband died from cancer about a year back. Oh, no. She went broke trying to keep up with the hospital bills, which, along with losing her husband, put her into a deep depression. She lost her job, friends, 
eventually her house. We're doing what we can to help bring her back from the darkness. You know, I had no idea that so many people living so close to my church had such needs. <laughs> it's not your fault, Reverend. We try to keep out of sight around this place. Neither the people nor the cops around here take kindly to us. Mm. You know, I just might have an idea that'll fix that. But I'm gonna need your help. Hugh! What are you doing here? I already explained to you last week that you can't be here. No, Sandra. These are my guests. What? You invited them? Why? Because it was the right thing to do. No, it's dangerous is what it is. No, these are good people, just like you and like you. They want to hear the word of the Lord, and who are we to deny them? This is outrageous, Reverend. What has gotten into you? A good friend of mine reminded me of Matthew 25, 35. He said, for I was hungry, and you gave me food. For I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. For I was a stranger, and you took me in. And that verse is about compassion for strangers in need. And I know this community has compassion. And just last week, I asked all of you to donate clothing, food, and medical supplies for those who are in need. And you happily delivered. So look around. These are all the people that your donations helped. But I ask, why should our charity and goodwill end here? We are able to donate food and clothing to these good people, but we can't share our pews with them. For too long, we've ignored the suffering of our fellow community members. We've shunned them, forced them into the shadows so that we can pretend that they don't exist. I say no more. Amen. We will no longer judge these people. We will not avoid them. We will embrace them and invite them into our house of worship. Come on, be good neighbors and introduce yourself to our latest parishioners. Make them welcome, come on. I'm so sorry for the way I act. Peace be with you, brother. And also with you. Thank you. I'm sorry too. Maybe we could start over? Thank you. Thank you, Reverend, for all of this. No, thank you. For what? For reminding me of why I became a pastor in the first place. To help people, not to judge them. Are you seeing this? I paid good money to have my little girl's ninth birthday party here. And you're just gonna let this homeless woman and her kid ruin it? Yeah, do something. <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Yeah, there's no loitering here. But I have a, a, a pass for today, and I, I use a coupon. You used a coupon to pay for the price of admission? How broke are you? It's my Sarah's birthday. I wanted to do something special for her. Uh, these are legit. Enjoy. What are you doing? You can't just allow them in here. They don't belong here. I mean, look at them. They're gonna ruin my daughter's special day. I'm sorry, ma'am, that's not my call. They pay to be here just like you did. No, no, not just like I did. I paid full price. That should count for something. Oh, oh. Britt, no. But mommy, we're having fun. 
Lauren! You are not to play with that little girl. Do you understand me? Is something wrong? You bet something is wrong. I don't want my Brit associating with people like you and your child. I don't want your poorness to rub off on my kid. Who knows what sort of parasites are swarming on those rags you're wearing. Oh, come on, you're playing over here. Did I do something wrong, Mama? No, baby. No, you didn't. Why don't we play together? How about that? Happy birthday to you. Chocolate cupcake, my favorite. <laughs> what kind of a mother doesn't have cake for her daughter's birthday or presents? All right, everybody, gather around, gather around. It's time for Brit's cake and presents. <laughs> Don't worry, there's enough for everybody. But of course, Brit is gonna get the first birthday cake piece, right, everybody? All right. Oh, wait, I forgot some presents. All right, I'll be right back, y'all. Baby, I'm sorry I didn't get you a real cake. It's okay, Mama. I don't need a big cake. The cupcake looks yummy. Well, then you better blow out the candle then <laughs> so you can eat it. <laughs> no! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you down there over all these presents. Mm -hmm. Come on, baby. Let's leave. Already? Yes, I'm sorry. You know, maybe we can find some games to play outside. You know, you should never judge someone before getting to know their story. Huh. <laughs> really? Like, who would want to hear her depressing story? Like, yikes. Did you have fun? That was fun, right? I just wanted to do something nice for you. But I feel like I ruined it. Uh, uh, sweetie, honey, um, why don't you take these toys, put them in there, I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. You should not have been treated like that on your special day. It's just been so hard since your father passed away. I've been trying my best. I have, but we're still living in, in the car. I just feel like I'm failing you. Don't say that. You're the best mom ever. Daddy will be so proud of you. I bet he's looking down on us right now, thinking the exact same thing. Please, I am not in the mood for your judgment, okay? You're getting what you want, we're leaving. No, it's not about that, I, I promise. What do you want? To apologize? I, I, I shouldn't have been so terrible to you both in there. Oh. Thank you. Oh, wait, 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 and um, <laughs> Britt wanted to give these to Sarah. Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sarah. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't understand, why? I overheard your conversation with Sarah earlier about your husband and your living situation. I was such a jerk back there and neither of you deserve that. Oh, so the reason why you're doing this is because you, you feel bad for me? I, I don't need your charity. No, 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 no. Um, See, I'm a single mother too. And believe it or not, when my husband left me, I lived in my car too for a little while. My girl was too little to remember, but it was just so hard. And I vowed to never be put in that position again. So I think that's why I overreacted back there. It reminded me of where I was, and so I took it out on you. What happened wasn't my fault then, and it's not your fault now. Thank you. But I also wanted to run something else by you. Britt and I were talking, and she just adores your Sarah. <laughs> She's so fun. No, you're so fun. <laughs> so we were thinking 
that maybe you and Sarah both would want to stay with us for a little while, just until you get back on your feet. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, that's awfully nice of you to ask, but I, I don't think I can accept that. That's it's too much. It's too much. Please, I had so much fun playing with Sarah. I know she would love to stay. You both would. Ah! <laughs> well, well, what do you say? You're the birthday girl. Can we, Mama? Can we? It'll be so fun. Okay. Well, I guess that settles it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's the least I can do. Someone once told me, never judge someone without knowing their story first. I'm just taking her advice. <laughs> Thank you. All right, follow us. We have some birthday cake to eat. <gasps> <gasps> hey, get out of here. Go on. I don't need your stench in here stinking the place up, scaring my customers away. What are you looking at? I don't need these bums out here in front of my store. Why don't you make yourself useful? Take these rolls, take them out to the dumpster now, will ya? This place is starting to look like my kid's bedroom. Sir, are you okay? Me? Uh, yeah, um, I... Are you hungry? These are still pretty fresh. I promise, it's not trash. This is really good. Thank you. you know, if you just wait right here, I, I can get you some water too. Hey, didn't I run you off? Get out of here, now! Wait, Manny, it's okay. No, it's not okay. We can't give our food to these people. Well, why not? We were just gonna throw these old rolls out anyway. You don't get it, do you? You give one person some food today and you got 10 of them in line getting a handout tomorrow. Come on, what are you waiting for? Get up, come on, what are you okay. waiting for? I'm get out sorry. of here. Manny, was that really necessary? Oh, don't be a sucker, Julie. These people, they're just con men or they're leeches. And they wanna feed off the rest of us. How could you say that? You can't judge someone before you get to know them. What you need to know is we're not giving our food to these people, all right? And the next time I catch you doing it, you're fired. Now get back to work, will you? Hungry? I know you. No, no, I, I, I don't want to get you in trouble again. Look, my boss can't get mad at me. I paid for the sandwich myself. Well, well then you, you should have it. It's fine. Really, I want you to have it. Thank you. I have to ask. Why do you keep on coming back here, even after my boss has chased you away so many times? I wish I could tell you, but my memory just ain't no good ever since... Ever since? Four, four years ago, I, I, I woke up in a hospital bed with no memory of how I got there. The doctors said they found me outside the hospital with some kind of head injury. I guess they figured I must have had some kind of accident or something. That's so scary. And you never found any friends or family who could maybe piece it back together or... No, no. N not because I didn't try, but, you know, with no ID, no money, no, no real memory. You know, well, it, it just makes it kind of hard. I bet. But you remember the store. I, I don't know why. I have no real memories of my life before the accident, but there's just something about this place that feels really familiar. 
Like I belong here. I just can't place it. Well, maybe I could help. Hey, I Julie, could try. didn't I warn you? Okay, Manny, it's not what it looks like. No, what it looks like is that you're giving that bum more food. Okay, first of all, he's not a bum, he's a person. And second of all, I paid for that sandwich myself. Uh, that's not the point, Julie. The point is you keep encouraging people like him to come in for handouts. And after I told you not to. Look, you don't understand. This gentleman, he could barely remember. You don't remember. You don't remember what I said I'd do if I caught you do it again. Okay, please. Wait, I, I need this no, job. No, it's over. No more. You're fired. I feel really terrible that I got you fired. It's fine. It's just a job. And besides, he was never going to promote me anyway, so I'm better off. You know, I'm a really good researcher. My best friend, she's a beat reporter for The Times, and I help her all of the time. I'm sure I could find more information about your life. You would do that for me even after I got you fired? Why? First, everyone deserves help once in a while. And second, I love a good mystery. <laughs> well, knock yourself out. I won't hold it against you if you can't find anything. Trust me, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Well, you were right. Wait, did you find something? I had to go digging through some hard copies, but I think your friend with the memory issues might just be the missing Hampton brother. I'm sorry, am I supposed to know who that is? It was big news a few years back. The Hamptons are one of the richest families in town, and the oldest sibling, a man named Patrick, mysteriously vanished one summer night. And for some time, people thought it was a kidnapping, a ransom sort of thing, but police never found any leads and assumed he just ran away. Wow. Okay, wait, wait. Wait, that's him. Julie, this is nuts. You're handing me the biggest story of the year. My editor is gonna freak out. I don't know if I'll ever be able to repay you for something like this. Well, I have one idea. And it might make your big story even better. Patrick? Oh my God, it is you, Patrick! <laughs> Patrick? That's my name, isn't it? After all these years, it's really you. I can't believe it. And you're a, my sister. My sister Moira. Yes. <laughs> Do you know how long we've searched for you? The police tried to tell us that you'd run away. I never believed that. How did you find me? Oh, it's thanks to Julie. I don't even know how to begin to thank you. Hey, I, I can't believe it. You got some nerve. I told you not to come around here anymore. Okay, Manny, just wait one second. No, I'm done. I'm calling the police and I'm gonna get them involved. Wait, is there some sort of problem? Yes, there's some sort of problem. He's a bum, he keeps coming around here and she keeps enabling him. I think I can explain to you why he keeps coming back to the spot. You see, my family, we own this entire shopping center, and, well, Patrick, he worked at the sandwich shop every summer when he was a teenager. That's right. I did. <laughs> oh, well, uh, can you tell me why I should care? Because in addition to owning this entire shopping center, we also own the sandwich shop. And I don't think we want someone like you managing our business. Wait, <laughs> uh, look. Uh, Consider yourself fired. You don't want to do that. She just did. You can have it. I guess your shop needs a new manager. Yes, perhaps someone that's shown such kindness and brilliance in reuniting me with my family. You're offering me the management job, really? It's the least I can do to repay you for all that you've done. What do you say? Yes, I accept. I accept. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sounds like someone's going to need another sandwich. I'll take one if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs>
I recommend the Caesar. It's excellent. If you have any more questions, I'll be right back with your drinks. What are you doing here? Yeah. What are you doing here? I'm going to ask you one more time to just leave. Okay. Oh. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Oh, right this way. Oh, he was here first, so you can seat him. Oh, this man does not need a seat because this place is only for paying customers. So I'm going to ask you one last time, and that's it. Final. Hey, hey. Adam, what's going on? This man won't leave, so I'm going to call the cops. Sorry, I want trouble. I was just really hungry and hoping to get something to eat, but I'll leave. Finally. That's all right. I can make you a sandwich. What's your name? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm Leroy. Absolutely not. Sean, have you lost your mind? He can't eat here. Um, let's talk about this in the kitchen. Fine. And, uh, my lady, your table? And I apologize for all the commotion. Hey, Alex, uh, why don't you go take a break? There is no way that that man is eating in here. Times are already tough, and now you want some smelly bum chasing away all the customers? Not a chance. Anna, I'm not gonna argue about this. If he can't eat inside, then I'll take him some food to go. No, you won't. Look, we don't have money to give away free food. You know how slow things have been. I know we aren't doing well, but we're not doing as bad as I know he must be doing. The poor guy's hungry, and we have a kitchen full of food. It won't hurt us to spare some. No, no, we can't. Now, as owner of this restaurant, I am putting my foot down. Well, as co-owner, so am I. Adam. You're being heartless. Well, I'd rather be heartless than penniless. The answer is still no. I know we've had our fair share of differences, but this is the last straw. If this is how it's gonna be, I no longer wanna be part of it. You can't be serious. So you're gonna tell me that you're gonna let an argument about some bum ruin our partnership. Seriously? Well, guess what? You're not getting any of your investments back, and I know that you don't have anything. You know what? Keep your money. I've started over before, and I'll start over again. Wish you the best, Adam. Mm. Well, good for you, Sean. You know what? Why don't you take your crumb bum friend and get out of here? Hit the bricks. Hey, I'm sorry about that. I could take you to get something to eat. Gee, thanks. Hey, sorry to cause you trouble with your partner there. Ex-partner. After you. So, what can I get going for you? Uh, I think I'm gonna go somewhere else, but thanks. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I don't mean to impose, but I can help but overhear some of your conversation back there. You're really willing to walk away from your entire investment because you want to help this man get some food? Yes. And there were also some other issues, but this one is very close to my heart. What do you mean? Well, I also know what it's like not to have enough food to eat. It's part of why I got into this business. You see, a few years ago, times got really hard for me. I lost my job and ended up living on the streets. Some nights, I didn't even have food to eat. But then out of nowhere, this kind restaurant owner started helping me out. She would always give me food whenever I needed it and treated me with so much love and kindness. To be honest, I don't even know if I would have survived if it wasn't for her. So you see, that woman changed my life. And I'd be a hypocrite not to pay it forward to help others out. Wow, so, so you went from not having any food to eat to Owning your own restaurant? How did that happen? I got a job and I started saving. 
once I had enough to start a business, I figured, why not get into the business of feeding people? Have you ever gone back to see that lady? I have. She recently passed, um, and you know, she's always say, Sean, the kindness you put out into the world always comes back to you. Mm -hmm. I wish she was still here so I could pay her some kindness. But all I can do is keep her legacy alive by helping others, even though it's gonna be kind of hard now that I don't have any money. So in other words, you're back to square one now? Why are you writing this down? Well, Sean, my name's Alicia, and I'm actually a journalist. And I've got to say, this has to be one of the best stories I've heard in a really long time. I'd love to tell it to the world, if that's OK with you. I don't know. I, it's completely up to you, but I say, Think of all the people that it would help inspire. What do you mean? Your story definitely helped to inspire me. It gave me hope that I could make it off the streets, too. See? Listen to Leroy. What? Come on. You've already lost your restaurant. What else you got to lose? If it helps inspire people, I guess I'm in. Yes. Great. All right, so take me back to the very beginning. And just Sean decides to let the journalist tell his story to the world. And sure enough, the story ends up going viral. People are amazed by not only Sean's ambition, but also his kindness. A few days later, there's a knock on his door. To his surprise, there's a GoFundMe started in his name and people all over the world have raised $50,000 for him. Sean can't believe it. He decides to use that money to once again open another restaurant. And this time, without a partner to tell him what he can and cannot do. Sometime later, things are better than ever, but little did he know he was in for one more surprise. I see things are going pretty well. Yeah, thanks to you. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for your article. Well, it worked both ways. Turns out that story got so much attention that I got a little promotion. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I move it up in the world. <laughs> And at some point, you may need to hire some more help, you know? Oh, I already did. <laughs> oh. Hey, Alicia. Nice to see you here. Same, Leroy. And you clean up well. <laughs> Thanks. Boss, look who's here. Oh, uh, could you help this customer for me? Hey, Adam. What are you doing here? Oh, I heard you got a new spot, so I wanted to check it out. Got a really nice place here, man. Thank you. How are you? How are things going? Uh, well, I, the place went out of business. Yeah, all right. When the article came out, people put two and two together, and they realized it was me that uh, kicked Leroy out, so. Things went from bad to worse. I'm sorry to hear that. That wasn't my intentions. Ah, man. I had it coming. Gosh, I wish I uh, go back and do things a lot differently. Anyway, look, uh, let me get out of your hair. All I wanted to do is just come by and congratulate you, you know? That's all. I got to go to a job interview, so hope I get it. Yeah, uh, best wishes on it. Hey, boss, she doesn't have enough. What do you want me to do? I. Uh, hey, uh, you know what? I got this. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> Adam. 
Things must be hard for you, though, are you sure? Yeah, they are, but, you know, I'm sure she's got a lot harder. You know, and it's... This might actually be helping me. It's like you said in the article, all the kindness that you put in the world has a way of coming back to you. See you, man. Hey. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about adding a second location, and I could use a really good manager. You don't say. Well, if you hire me, I will only work under one condition. What's that? That you take some of my checks to pay back all the money that you lost in our diner. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. But you know what? We are doing well here, and we could put that money to better use. How about we donate it to charity? Deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, listen up. This is a Kitchelin star, the highest and most exclusive honor any restaurant can get. It is the main reason why Giovanni's has been so busy. Yeah, well, that's great for you, but how does that help any of us? It's not like you've paid any of us anything more. Last time I checked, the name of the restaurant was the Giovanni's. Not Fred or Roy, whatever your name is. And you still have a job, right? So maybe you should be grateful for that. Anyway, there is only one thing that is more prestigious than a Kitchelin star. And does anybody know what that is? Yeah. Two Kitchelin stars. Now we have an inspector coming today, and if he or she likes us, we will get that second Kitchelin star, and then I will really be rolling in the dough. <laughs> You get it? Rolling in the dough. Anyway, the point is, I need all of you to be on your A game today. So, chop chop. Go. Hello, sir. How may I help you? Hi. Like a table for one, please? Sure. Right this way. Uh, no, 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 you're not welcome here. Excuse me? Look, I have a very important person coming here later today, remember? And I don't want them to think that this is the kind of place where people like you hang out. I'm sorry? What do you mean, people like me? That must be the inspector. Look, I do not want her to see that we have a homeless person here. What do you want me to do? Seat him in the back. Um, where nobody can see him, and hopefully he won't stink up the joint. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. I can take you to your table now. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Giovanni's. I am Giovanni. The Giovanni. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I must say, I did not expect to meet the owner up front. <laughs> You really know how to treat your customers. Well, it's like I always say, treat every customer with respect because they are the key to success. Well, I, I really love that. Uh, do you mind if I take notes? <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't mind at all. Please, follow me right this way. Mm -hmm. Right here. Best seat in the house. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here's your menu. Now, as you may know, we are a one Kitchelin star restaurant, but we are hoping that in the very near future, we can be a two Kitchelin star restaurant. <laughs> uh, uh, is that so? Yes. Excuse me. Um, let me tell you a little bit about some of my favorite items on the menu. The French onion soup is hey. a recipe. It is absolutely out of this Excuse world. me, I think that man is really trying to... Oh, no, don't, don't, don't worry about him. See, <clears throat> sometimes we give free food to the homeless, you know, as a way of giving back to the community. It's, uh, it's part of Giovanni's commitment to helping others. <laughs> um... I really love that. Thank you. Over here! Um, 
How about this? You read through the menu and I will be right back. What do you want? I'd like to place an order. Do I look like a server to you? By the way, how are you gonna pay for this? This food is not free. I just gotta pay cash. <laughs> Let me see the cash up front. What? Really? Mm, I know about you people. Dine and dash? Well, it ain't gonna happen in my joint. I either see the cash up front, or you're not eating. <laughs> okay. There. That should be enough. You, come here. Here. Give this guy a grilled cheese sandwich and a glass of water. Yes, sir. What? It's not what I want. You are lucky I let you eat here at all. Now, do not give me any more problems. Mm. <coughs> and? Mm. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Giovanni. Oh, no, no. Please, call me Gio. Okay, Gio. You really know how to take care of your customers. Well, thank you. It's like I said before, treat every customer with Excuse respect. Excuse me. Hello. I'm so sorry. I will be right back. Mm -hmm. And you are going to love your dessert. <laughs> I can't wait. What is it? Any idea how much longer until I get my food? <gasps> Hello? What's that? What's what? That. I'd like to order some. Listen to me, old man. The only reason I let you eat here is because I have an inspector sitting over there and I am trying to get my second Kitchelin star. Otherwise, I would have kicked you out into the street. Sorry about that. Sometimes our charitable program can get a little challenging, but at the end of the day, it is so worth it. <laughs> anyway, here it is. Giovanni's world famous double chocolate cake. And the chocolate is imported all the way from Italy. Oh, really? Well, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. mm. Impressed enough to give us a second Kitchelin star, maybe? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Come on, I know who you are. You're the inspector. That's why you've been taking notes the whole time. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, I'm actually taking notes because I plan to open my own restaurant someday. Uh, they're purely for inspiration. Okay, so wait. If you're not the inspector, then... Who is? One last thing before I go. I'll be taking this. What? Give that back to me. What are you doing with my Kitchelin star? I never had a chance to formally introduce myself. My name is Davis. Inspector Davis. I'm in charge of giving stars to restaurants. Okay. All right. Inspector Davis, I, I, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I, excuse me. Wait a minute. You wanted a piece of chocolate cake. Let me give you a slice of chocolate cake. It is to die for, please. That's all right. I won't be eating here again. And after my review, lots of other people won't either. Okay, wait, 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 please. And to everyone that works here, here's a few of my business cards. If you're ever looking for something new, I know a lot of great restaurants that pay really well. No. No, 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 no! You cannot do this! Out of all people, I thought you would know to treat every customer with respect, because they're the key to success. Good luck to you.
Have a seat. I'll bring him right out. Hey! Watch where you're going, man. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you know how expensive this suit is? Much more than you can afford. You're probably right. I'm really sorry, sir. Some people. Anyway, um, let me get um, three slices of cheese. We have a five for five dollar deal if you want to add two more. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Great, have a seat. I'll bring them right out. What the heck? Okay, five slices of cheese. Great pizza, right? This is unbelievable. Really? You're gonna take the last slice of pizza? Oh, sounds like you're hungry. There you go. That is disgusting. What is wrong with you? You know what? You should be ashamed of yourself. You should go out and get a job instead of eating other people's food. Here's your pizza, sir. No, no, no. No, you already dropped mine off. Oh, that was his pizza. He ordered the same thing. Oh my God, that was your pizza. Yes, it was. I'm so sorry. That whole time I, I thought you were eating my, my pizza. And, and then you, you split that last slice in half. But why? Well, I may not have much, but I'm always happy to share. I shouldn't have been so quick to assume. Please, please, have some of mine. I'm more than happy to share. And then my fourth shop is close to where I stay. And that's how I opened up my fifth shop in the city. All right. Hey, Markel. Yeah, what's happening? Can I get a loan? Bro, what I look like? A charity? Get you a job, man. Oh, cold. Hey, my boy, you got better luck getting money in the street with a homeless sign than with Markel over there. Pocket's tight. You got that right. Ain't no handouts over here. Uh-uh. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I'm still getting the hang of it. That's a nice car. Thank you. You're welcome. Is it remote control? Yeah. That's neat. Thank hey, you. Hey, hey, sir. Back up. I don't want you near him. What do you want? Sorry for the trouble. My name's John. I was wondering if I could use your bathroom. Does this place look like a public restroom to you? Go pee on the street where you belong. Please, sir, I... Go! Get out of here. You stinking up my shop. Sorry to be of trouble. Dad, why didn't you let him use the restroom? He seemed like a nice guy. Because I don't want guys like that in my shop. It's bad for business. Just look at him. But I thought you should never judge someone before you get to know them. There's nothing to know. He's a drug addict. 
probably dangerous. And the saying goes, if you feed a stray, it'll keep coming back. And we definitely don't want that, right? How else is a stray supposed to get fed? You're missing the point. Just be careful next time, okay? Oh, man. Did I forget to turn the alarm on? Probably. You always do. Yeah. All right, we'll stay right here. I'll be right back. Wait, wait there, I'll get it. Keep a watch out, all right? Thank you. Of course. You know, I have a daughter just a little older than you. Hey, 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 hey. What do you think you're doing, man? I was just trying to help her. Her remote... Stay away from my daughter, you understand me? But, Daddy... Go inside the shop. But... Now, Zuri! I don't know why you think it's okay to talk to my kid. Sir, it's not what you think. I promise you. Just I'm... get out of here before I decide to stop being nice. Okay. Okay. Hey. Hey. Get up, man. Get up. No. Get up. Up, man, what are you doing? Get up! What do you want from me? I don't have anything. What? Are... Oh, sorry, sir. I was trying to. Trying to make my barbershop into a homeless encampment? No, that's not the case. That's not happening. Where you, sir? That's all my stuff, sir. Those are my personal possessions. Dad, no! You should have thought about that before you decided to loiter in front of my property. I'm sorry, sir. You think I got to where I am in life? by letting homeless people sleep in front of my barber shop? No, sir, I don't. I, I don't, sir. I... What are you doing? Dad, stop it! No, Zuri! Oh, that's my stuff! Now get your things from the street where you belong. Yes, yeah, sir. Right away, sir. Now I'm gonna call the police for trespassing. No, 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 no police. No police, please, sir. Do not call the police. Yes, 911, I have an emergency. Get my stuff, I'll put in a bag. I'll disappear yes. from yeah, this Yeah, I'm at my barbershop and there's this homeless man trespassing. Please, no jail, I cannot go to jail. And my daughter, she's here for her life. Yes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Yes, please. Send an ambulance right now. Where am I? Thank God you're okay. You're in the hospital, John. The hospital? Your daughter, is she okay? Yes, she's okay. Come here, babe. She's all right, thanks to you. Thank you so much for everything. Of course, little one, of course. I can't believe you're still worried about her instead of yourself. Listen, um, I'm really sorry about how I treated you. You have to understand that homeless people aren't as nice as you. And I was just trying to protect my daughter. Yeah, I know. And I've met my, my fair share of homeless people. I also know what it's like to be a protective father. You do? Oh, yeah. I wasn't always like this. You see, 
Just a few years ago, life seemed perfect. I was married with a decent job, and my daughter Shayla was my whole world. In the beginning of our marriage, my wife was an up and coming realtor. Eventually, she became a lot more successful, and it started getting to her head. One day, while she was at work, I came to pay her a visit. And let's just say her rich client that she'd always spent a lot of time with was more than just a client. Instead of feeling any remorse whatsoever, she decided to abandon our family. She went to live a new life with that man she'd been seeing, leaving me and Shayla behind. I did my best to keep everything afloat, but I was so depressed. A lot of days I, I couldn't even get out of bed. So I lost my job, and not long after that, our home. With nowhere to go, I ended up on the street. And it didn't take long for Child Protective Services to come and take my little girl away from me. That had to be the hardest day of my life. So you see, in a very short amount of time, I lost everything. I lost my wife. I lost my job. I lost my home. I even lost my daughter. I did not plan for my life to go this way. But life made other plans. Gosh. I can't believe that happened to you. In all this time, how come you didn't get a new job or try to get your daughter back? New job? You think I didn't try? I went down a downward spiral. I could never dig myself out. When you're homeless, people take one look at you and think they know everything there is to know about you. Yeah, well, I guess I'm guilty of that too. I realize now what Zara is trying to tell me that you really shouldn't judge someone before you get to know them. I'm so sorry about that. And I should know better, because I'm, my wife isn't in the picture anymore either. I'm sorry to hear that. And, and being a single father, a lot of people look at you different. Yeah, I do. At least you still got your daughter there. Uh, I'd do anything, anything to get my Shayla back. <laughs> Shayla. Who am I kidding? I can't even get a job. You know what? I think I might be able to help with that. Sorry, John. Oh, that's quite all right, little one. Let me get that for you. Let me, here you go. Zuri, what did I tell you about that remote control car? Here's your paycheck. Wow, thank you, Mark Hill. Yeah. You know, now that I have an apartment, a few more of these, I could probably get a car. <laughs> and then maybe, God willing. And then? Maybe next year I could, uh, Try to get Shayla back. Who says you have to wait a whole nother year? Well, I made a bunch of phone calls, pulled a few strings, and... Daddy! Shayla, oh my goodness! How is this possible? <laughs> Thank you. I thought I would never...
never see you again. You think I would let that happen? I've missed you so much. Come here, come here. Oh, goodness, goodness. Oh, you must be... Oh, Janice. Her mom. Well, foster mom. But I like to call her mom. Janice is so nice to me. Oh, that's so good to hear. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of my Shayla. I'm John. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Shayla talks about you all the time. She really loves you. Uh, I love her too. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to spoil your moment, but does this mean that my days with my sweet girl are limited? Oh, why? Well, I don't know how the social service stuff works, but uh, I mean, I hope you could still be a part of her life, of, of our lives. I'd like that very much. Hi, I'm Jerry. Look, it's a stray puppy. I'll take care of it. No, 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 wait, hold on. Uh, let me see if I can find some food around here. I thought you said you shouldn't never feed a stray. Well, that was the old me. And how else is it supposed to get fed, huh? All right, well, I'll be right back. Don't let that cute little puppy leave. Oh. There you go, buddy. Hi, what are you doing? You want something to eat, little man? I don't have any money. Don't worry. This one's on me. What did I tell you about talking to stranger? He could be dangerous. Ma'am, it's, it's not like that at all. Hey, you need to leave. You scare my customers. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Please, I'm just trying to make a couple no, bucks. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Now, you need to go, and you need to take this dirty dog with you. Excuse me. I know, I know, I'm leaving. No, I just uh, wanted to get something to eat. Yeah, of course. I'll make you my specialty, nacho tacos. Hey, aren't you a good boy? How long have you been doing this? Cooking? Oh, man. Forever? I actually used to run my own restaurant, making all kinds of stuff. Pretty popular place, maybe you've heard of it? Tony's? A big red building and it had a pink door. I remember that place, that was your spot? Wow, they had some of the best food in Colorado Springs. Now that I think about it, I think I took a date there one time. Yeah, in fact, I know that I did because I remember thinking that the food was way better than the date. <laughs> it's like that sometimes, you know? Can I ask what happened? Tony's was always pretty packed. You mean like what I shut down? Same reason everyone else did. Pandemic? I may have lost everything, but uh, it's all right. I'm still one of the luckiest guys in the world. What do you mean? Well, I get to do what I was put on this earth for every day. I get to cook and share food with people. Sometimes I even still go downtown to help feed the homeless just like I did when um, the restaurant was still open. Plus, I got Roscoe here, you know? You, uh, you want all the fixings? Please. Let me, uh, let me know what you think. Oh my God. This is probably one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life. Just a uh, little something. Something I've been working on? You ever think about opening up another restaurant? I think it would make a killing. Yeah, I mean, that'd be the dream. The banks won't really give me a loan, you know? People won't even really look at me. Everyone thinks I want to scam them out of money for drugs or alcohol or whatever else, you know? That must be really tough. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. It's just being homeless. Nobody trusts you. I've been kicked out of so many places now, I just may end up living in a tent downtown someplace. Are you gonna be around tomorrow? Yeah. I mean, not exactly here, but 
I'll be around. What? I'm gonna bring some friends by, if that's all right with you. Of course. I'll be waiting. And, uh, I'm Tony. <laughs> As you know. I'm Charlie. I'll see you guys soon. See you, Charlie. Oh, wait, wait. You changed. No, 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 you keep that. Believe me, this is worth that and then some. Hey, what are you still doing here? I know, I know, I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now, I swear, I swear. I don't get it. He said he was gonna be around here yesterday. Excuse me, have you seen Tony, the guy who was out here yesterday cooking? You talking about the homeless guy? Oh, I finally got rid of him for good. I had to call the cops. Why would you do that? For loitering and bothering my customers. I had to tell him over and over again, nobody wants him here. OK, well, do you at least know where he is? It's kind of important that we find him. Hopefully he's in jail. But I don't know. As long as he's not in front of my store, I don't care. <sighs> OK, come on. Hi, yes, I'm looking for a man. His name is Tony. I don't know his last name, but he's uh, middle-aged, probably has a dog with him. He would have been booked about an hour ago. OK, thanks anyway. You called every police station in the area. I don't think we're going to find him. Yeah, maybe it just wasn't meant to be. At least you tried. Yeah, well, trying isn't good enough. Come on, guys, let's think about this. If you were a guy who loved to cook and wanted to feed people, where? I got it. Oh, I know where he is. What? There you go. I can enjoy it. Thanks. Hey, Charlie, my man. What are you doing here? We stopped by where I met you yesterday, but they said that the cops kicked you out? Yeah, the uh, owner, she really has it out for me. But how'd you find me all the way down here? Well, first I called like a million places, <laughs> but then it hit me that you would be where you are needed most. And here you are, cooking for homeless people downtown. What can I say? Uh, old habits die hard, you know? These are my friends. Hey. Hey, can I uh, offer you guys something? Oh, no, thank you. No, actually, uh, we want to offer you something. What is this? That's for you. What? What is all this? Cooking supplies. Pots, pans, knives, everything. The guy at the store said that it is the best of the best. And, uh, of course, I couldn't forget you, Roscoe. <laughs> hey, Charlie, oh, this God. is... This is way too much. I, I can't accept all this. I insist. You have a gift. And you should be able to share that. I just hope that all of us can help you do that. It definitely will. I, I don't know I'm ever going to be able to repay you. You don't have to repay me. Just one day, when you're able, pay it forward. Because what goes around always comes around. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Actually, yeah. Uh, we have a few more surprises for you. What are you doing tonight? Oh, man, I mean, I might have to check my schedule, but <laughs> no plans, Charlie. Well, why don't you come over to my place? I'm going to cook for my friends. Yeah. Maybe you can give me a few pointers. You mean like, like a dinner? I, I don't know about that. Oh, you wouldn't have to do any of the cooking. I'll do all the work. It's, it's not that. It's just... I'd be happy to make all the food. It's just, um, I'm not really in a state to be in somebody's house, you know? I don't even really know the last time I had a room shower. You can shower at my place. I've got an extra bathroom and like a hundred of those tiny little hotel soaps just lying around. He's not lying, you know? <laughs> I, no, that all sounds great, but really, I. I'd hate to inconvenience you. You wouldn't. I would be learning from a master chef. That is worth a shower. And anyway, you're probably going to want more from me after you taste my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> oh, shoot. No, Charlie, it's, it's all right. I got Roscoe. 
I got a great big yard that he can just run around in. So what do you say? This is just... All this almost seems too good to be true. What do you think, Roscoe? You want to go? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a yes. Uh, Perfect. Keep. Yeah? Sure. Uh, let's just meet here at five o'clock. Well, we'll see you then. Oh, it's great to see you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Roscoe, you made it. <laughs> So, I hope you don't mind, but, uh, I picked up a few things for you. I just guess that you're a large. You guess right. Come here. Awesome. Guest bathroom right here. Take your time, get cleaned up. Fresh towels for you right there. And I will take Roscoe. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Of course. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, Roscoe. Are you hungry? Come here. Refresh. Oh, you should check it out. We're at forty-two thousand dollars. What the way? Yes. Yeah, look. Hey, looking good. You clean up nice, Tony. Yeah, you look like a completely different person. Thank you. Thank you. That was the best shower I've had in years. We look amazing, man. Also. This. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Tony, would you mind taking a look at my suit? Oh, yeah. What you working on here, Charlie? Charlie, I'm impressed. Hmm, that is one good base. Now, if you want to elevate it, though, spices. We're going to add some cumin, just a little bit. There's the paprika, same thing, not too much. And then some chili. Give it a stir. Go ahead and give that a try. <laughs> that's delicious. Nice. <laughs> so that's all I've been doing wrong all these years? Mm, I think it's probably a little bit more than that. <laughs> yeah. There I'm not. So, do we eat dinner first? Or do we show Tony his next surprise? Oh. <sighs> wait, wait. More, more than all this. Guys, really, everything you've already done so far is so much more than I could ever ask for. Well, I think you're really gonna like this next one. Should we show him? Yeah, yeah. let's go. Uh, your whole life is about to change, Tony. I can't believe you guys are doing all this for me. Come on. Oh wait, we should cover his eyes. Yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. All right, ready? Watch your step. Come on, a couple more steps. Ready? Open his eyes. <laughs> what in the world? No. Mm -hmm. No, guys, no way. You don't have to cook on that little grill anymore, Tony. You said your wish was to open a restaurant again, right? Yeah. Now you have one. <laughs> Come on, let's go check it out. Oh, this is yours. You own this now, Tony. No way, no. I don't believe this. It's got everything you need. Sink, fridge, shelves. We even got you a gift card so you can buy groceries. <laughs> the only thing this place is missing, Tony, is you. 
Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you all. I don't know what to say. How did you guys even do this? Well, I may or may not have posted your story online. Turns out there's a lot of people that remember Tony's and wanted to help. It's even started building some media traction. Mm -hmm. We started a GoFundMe. We actually raised $43,000. Yeah. <laughs> $43,000? You kidding me? <laughs> we used that money to buy you this truck so that you never have to get kicked out of anywhere after the cops called on you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is, this has to be the best day of my life. Thank you, Charlie. Yesterday was really special. Yeah, it was. I wonder what Tony's doing. I bet you he's still on cloud nine. <laughs> Wait, should we go check on him? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Right? Sauce, cheese, everything, yeah. Hey, Tony, what's up, man? Hey, guys, what's going on? What brings you around here? Well, we just came by to check up on you. It looks like things are going really well here. Hey, I definitely can't complain. Here you go. Thank you. Well, if they're anything like your last place, I'm going to need to put an order in. How much are they? No, Charlie, put that away. It's on the house. Here you go, sir. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that, Tony, but I want to support you. I'll pay what everybody else is paying. All right. I'm not charging any of them. So here you go. I actually made a policy that I'm going to come down here at least once a day. I'm going to feed as many people as I can. And I'm going to do it for free. It's incredible, Tony. Way to go. Good for you. It's just uh, my way of paying it forward, you know? Because a wise man I know told me that everything that goes around always comes around. Couldn't agree more. At this rate, you're gonna have to hire somebody to help you. You know what? That's a great idea, Charlie. Give me a minute. Hello, ma'am? I saw your sign. Are you looking for work? Yes. I'm just trying to find a job so I can get something to eat. But it's it's hard getting employed looking like this. I know the feeling. Well, why don't you come work with Roscoe and I? <laughs> Are you for real? A hundred percent. I mean, I really could use the help. Does $15 an hour sound OK? Oh, my god. That would be the greatest blessing. Oh, wait. Do you have to interview or anything? No, no, don't worry about it. Most important thing is that the manager likes you. Roscoe's a pretty good judge of character. <laughs> well, thanks for believing in me, Roscoe. <laughs> Here you go. Try these nacho tacos. It's my signature dish. And whenever you're ready, come on board. You can get cleaned up, and I'll teach you how to make them. Oh, my god. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Don't mention it. Take your time, OK? OK, thank you. Come on. There was a homeless man named Billy who barely got by. He would hold out a cup and beg people for money, hoping to get enough so he didn't have to sleep on the street at night. Can you spare some change? Little did he know, he was about to meet a lady who had changed the rest of his life. This is for you. I hope this helps. Oh my God. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I don't have to sleep on the street tonight. But why'd you give me so much? I've always believed what goes around comes around. Wait. I don't even know your name. It's Sarah. Sarah Darling. I work across the street. I'm sure I'll see you around. Thank you, Sarah Darling. Thank you.
Billy realizes that when Sarah handed him the $20 bill, she accidentally dropped her wedding ring inside of his cup. He runs after Sarah to try to find her to give her her ring back. He looks all around for her, but he can't find her anywhere. Just as he gives up looking for her, he happens to come across a pawn shop. and decides he may as well go inside. Hi, can I help you? Uh, want to see how much this ring is worth? Wow, this is nice. I can give you $4,000 for it. $4,000? That's so much money. I wouldn't have to sleep on the street for months. A second. $1,000, $2,000, and $4,000. What goes around, comes around. What's wrong? Aren't you gonna take it? Um, actually, change my mind. I'm really sorry. Billy decides not to take the money and continues to look for Sarah instead. As he's walking around, he remembers something she told him. I work across the street. I'm sure I'll see you around. So he goes inside nearby offices, asking for a Sarah Darling. But no one seemed to know who she was. He keeps trying, and eventually he finds her. Is there a Sarah Darling that works here? Um, yeah. Sarah? Oh, hi. How can I help you? Hello. I believe this belongs to you. You dropped it in my cup. Oh my god. You found my ring. I've been looking everywhere for this. But I don't understand. I'm sure you could have got a lot of money for this. Why'd you give it back? Well, you helped me, so it's the least I could do. Besides, a wise woman once told me, what goes around, comes around. <laughs> Thank you so much. You have no idea how much this means to me. I'll never forget this. You're welcome. Wow. You know, you should start a GoFundMe for him. I'm sure people would love this story and want to help him. That's a great idea. Sarah decides to start a GoFundMe page for Billy, telling the story of how he gave her the ring back. And to her surprise, the story ends up going viral. People all over the world started donating. Within a few days, Sarah raises over $190,000 in donations. And then a few days later, Sarah goes to find Billy. Hey, Billy. Hello. Sarah. I have a surprise for you. A hundred and ninety thousand seven hundred and twenty-six surprises to be exact. What? This is all for me? 
But I don't understand. What's going on? I set up a donation page and I told everybody about what you did. People around the world donated. So now you don't have to worry about sleeping out on the streets anymore. You can buy your own home. I can't believe this is happening to me. God bless you. God bless you too. Can you share any change? Oh my gosh, did you just touch me? Do you realize I have to wash this now? You know how expensive that is? Um, of course not, you wouldn't, you're homeless. Okay, I, I, I just can't I'm today. So I so cannot so today! Oh. Hey man, you didn't deserve that. I wish I could give you more. This is the most money I've gotten in weeks. I'll be able to have lunch and dinner now. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Take care. Yeah. Please, I have a doctor's appointment and, I, and I'm gonna be short for the bus. Doctor's appointment, good one. <laughs> like I believe that. Great, I'm gonna miss my doctor's appointment. That's great. Here you go, ma'am. Hopefully that'll get you where you're going and back. Gosh, you don't know what this means to me. Well, I hope your appointment goes well. Thank you. You're an angel. <laughs> Mom, what's taking so long? I don't feel so good. I know, three, hold on. I've only had enough. Um, <laughs> what was the total again? 984. Uh, you don't happen to have a smaller box or something uh, like that? Come on, lady, can we move this line along? Ma'am, if you can't pay, you have to step out of line so I can help the next customer. I understand, it's just that my son really needs this medicine. He's really, really sick. <sighs> um, by any chance, uh, can I borrow like a $5 bill or? <laughs> Absolutely not. I Listen, can I just pay for this or what? Otherwise, I have to go. Yes. Right? Okay. But just keep the change, jeez. Um, I'm sorry, baby, but I'm not gonna be able to get your medicine right now, okay? Then how am I gonna feel better? It'll be all right. Here, this might help. Are you sure? I mean, yes, yes it would, but I, uh, are you gonna be able to pay for your it's food? It's not a problem at all. I have more than enough. Please, take it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Hope you feel better, pal. Thank you. Thank you. Change. Have a good one. like you could use a meal. No. You've already done so much. I insist. Take it. It's yours. But he must be hungry too. It's okay. I'll, I'll find more food. I always do. Hey. Uh, I'm confused. You said that you needed money for food, but then gave it to other people. I'm sorry. I hope you're not mad. No, no, not at all. I'm just curious why. I mean, I may not have much, but there's always someone that has less than me. I've always believed that the kindness you put out in the world has a way of coming back to you. Oh, I like that. I like that. Oh, I'm Chris, by the way. Oh, I'm Hank. Not sure you want to shake my hand. Oh, I don't mind. Oh. 
Nice to meet you, Hank. You too. I wish I had more cash to give you, so I mean, you could get some food. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm fine. And I'm glad that your $15 helped a whole lot of people. Hank, I got you some food. This nice man at the drive-thru, he ordered me two burgers. I figured I'll give you one since you're always doing so oh. nice things for me. Oh, thank you, Wendy. See, Chris, told you I'd be fine. I always figure it out. It's good, too. Did you want one? Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. But, uh... I got somewhere to go. Um, it was really great meeting you guys. I'll see you around. Nice meeting you too, Chris. Oh, this is good. Thank you, Wendy. Well, shall we eat? Honey. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> I was just thinking about this homeless guy that I met. He's a very nice man. Oh. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. I gave him $15 for food. He probably only had a little bit of spare change to his name. His clothes were dirty. Probably didn't shower for a while. And you know what he did? He spent the money on other people. Every last dollar. <laughs> I was shocked. I mean, who would do such a thing? Mom, are you okay? Yeah, um, just something you said. It, um, brought back some memories. You helped someone? Did the same thing? No. Someone helped me. A homeless person helped you? That doesn't make any sense. I've never told you this, sweetheart, but when you were very young, there was a point in time when we were homeless. You see, my dream was always to start a family. But your father, he never wanted children. So when he found out I was having you, he said to give you up for adoption. When I refused, he decided to leave. To make things even worse, after you were born and I needed to take time off from work, my job said they couldn't wait for me to come back. They decided to let me go. <laughs> Eventually, I got behind on bills. I wasn't able to keep up without any income. So, I had no choice but to sleep in the car. I remember one day, things got so bad, I didn't know how we were gonna eat. But then, a kind man helped us when I least expected. And he continued to help, day after day, until I got back on my feet. So you see, for a few months after you were born, we also were homeless. Wow, Mom. I can't believe you never told me this story. <laughs> well, it was so very long ago. And thankfully, our situation didn't last very long. But it's just so sad to think that there's some people who can't escape it. Especially knowing that there's such good people out there. David, wait. Oh, just throwing away the leftovers since no one usually eats them. Did, did you want some more? No. I have a better idea. Hank, you don't happen to have a dollar on you, do you? I need water. Oh, man. I had a dollar, but I ended up giving it to this boy who really needed the help. Sorry. That's all right. Chris. What are you doing back here? Well, I told you you'd be seeing me soon. This time I came prepared, so, uh, hope that helps. Uh, nah, you didn't have to do all of this. Look what he bought us. Exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Hey, Hank, uh, there's somebody I'd love for you to meet. 
my mom. It's... that helped us when we were homeless. I did? He did? Your name is Hank, right? You don't understand what you did for me. I was at the lowest point in my life, and you helped me get through it. Wow. That makes me so happy to hear. You know, I always love when I run into people that I've helped a long time ago and to see them do so well. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I I've come back multiple times looking for you. I, I figured you had left the street. I, I didn't realize you were still here. Well, I haven't exactly had the best luck. And at my age, it'd probably be a little too late for me right now. There's not any extra food in there, is there, Hank? Oh, yeah, sure. Hold on. You know, maybe you'd have better luck if you didn't give everything that you had away. True, but either way, I manage. Thanks to nice people like you. You know, why don't you come home with us? We have lots of extra bedrooms at our place. No, I, I mean, thank you for the offer. I mean, you've done more than enough, and I don't want to be a burden to anyone. Oh, you aren't a burden, I'm serious and it'll give me a chance to finally thank you for what you did for us. That's a great idea. I mean, come on, Hank. I mean, you would be doing us a favor. Yeah. Besides, a wise man once told me, all the kindness that you put out in the world will always find a way to come back to you. <laughs> well, since you put it that way. Wonderful, come on, let's get out of the cold. <laughs> all right. All right. So, I know for a fact Gary's seeing someone else now. Already? Oh, why do you think that? You know I'm the best detective. He storied something, and the pillow on the couch is the exact same pillow his coworker Alexandra has. And they've always had a thing for each other. Wait, you know what kind of couch cushion his coworker has? <laughs> I don't know, Jamie, that seems kind of... Oh my gosh, look at that lady. That's so heartbreaking. She's pregnant and on the streets. Yeah, that's awful. But I'm sure she made a lot of decisions to get here. I wouldn't feel too bad. Yeah, well, that's not nice to assume. I'm gonna help her. And there it is. Here, this is for you. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you too. Uh, I'm sorry about your situation. I'm Krista, by the way, and this is my friend Jamie. Hi, I'm Emily. You have no idea how much this is gonna help me. I I'm halfway to getting a hotel room for the night. You sleep in your car? Uh, no. <laughs> I sleep on the streets. I don't have a car. Do you have anyone you can call? Family, friends? Sadly, no. It's a, uh, it's just me. <laughs> I used to live with my boyfriend, Timothy, though. Um, but, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't really the nicest guy. He, I'm, I'm so sorry. Hey, 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 it's okay. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. <laughs> well, we hope things turn around for you. Good luck with everything. Let's go. I feel so bad for her. You don't know if what she's saying is even true. What are you doing? Being a good Samaritan. I'm gonna see if she wants to come stay with me. Krista, stop. You don't even know this person. And I have heard some scary stories about helping homeless people. Let's go. I feel terrible. She's pregnant and living on the streets. I can't begin to imagine what that's like. It's not your responsibility to take care of her. This isn't a safe decision. Well, we learned in church that you should always help someone in need. You gave her 10 bucks. That's a lot of help. There's no need to do more. 
Of course. Hey, let me ask you something. How would you like to come stay with me for a couple days? I, I know it might be hard for you to accept my offer. But Are you kidding me? Yes! <laughs> oh, okay, great! <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Oh, okay. Come with me, I'm just parked down the street. Okay. Yeah. Can, can I? Yeah. Okay, just got your room all set. Is that my bathrobe? Yeah, I hope it's okay that I used it. I, I didn't want to stay in my old clothes. Uh, sure, that's fine. Are you looking for something? A fork. Aha, found it. Uh, that's a, that's my pasta. I was gonna have that for dinner. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I think my pregnancy cravings just took over. It's okay. You can have it. You need it more than I do. Thanks. I see your hair is wet. Let me get you a towel. Oh, I'm actually good. Uh, I found one uh, in the bathroom. Oh, you're not supposed to use that. That's just for decoration. It's actually designer and very expensive. Whoops. I, I, I had no idea, um, but I'll just, I'll, I'll put it back. You know what? Uh, just use it, it's fine. All right, thanks. Uh, your room's ready, do you wanna see it? Uh, no, I, um, maybe after I eat. Of course, just let me know when you're ready. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm, really good pasta. Gary storied him eating spaghetti bolognese at a restaurant, and then in Alexandra's story, you can see she's also at dinner. If you zoom in close enough, what do you see on the other side of the table? The same exact pasta Gary's eating. Wow, that's crazy. You okay? You seem a little stressed. Do I? You know nothing gets past me. What's going on? Talk to me. Maybe I shouldn't dig into these things too much, but I'm just getting a weird feeling about Emily. What's she been doing? It's been five days now. She doesn't seem at all interested in leaving anytime soon. I keep asking her what her plans are, but she dodges the question. Plus, she's messy, she uses my stuff, and ugh, something just feels... Is she getting into your car? You gotta be kidding me, and she's wearing my dress. Emily! What are you doing? Oh, uh... I didn't realize you were home. Uh, I need to go to a doctor's appointment. Um, you know, for my baby. Do you mind if I use your car? Yes, I mind. If something happened, my insurance wouldn't cover you. Why wouldn't you ask me first? I, I didn't want to bother you. Sorry. I didn't mean to overstep any boundaries. I just, I felt this pain and it, I, I thought I should go in right away. Okay, well, I understand what you're saying. I'll call you an Uber, how's that? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll put your key back inside. And please ask before wearing any more of my clothes. Oh, okay, will do. <sighs> you did not just let her get away with that. Bad. I'm just trying to help her out. Krista, there's a difference between helping someone and being taken advantage of. I think you're getting taken advantage of. It's time you get her out. How do I even do that? Just tell her straight up. She can't say no. It's your house. Getting her mail here now? <sighs> what? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I can't do this anymore. Emily! <gasps> Don't you knock? What is that? <laughs> Can you give me some privacy? You've been pretending to be pregnant this entire time? 
What is wrong with you? I I can explain. See, this you is right to me. After everything that I've done for you, taking you in, feeding you, letting you use my clothes, ordering you clothes. Okay, please. You are in your 30s with no husband or kids. If anything, I've been giving your pathetic life purpose for the past few weeks. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I want you out now. Uh, no. What? I said no. Fine, then I'm calling the cops. Hmm. Go right ahead. Hi, yes. I'd like to report a trespasser. Hmm. That's the cops. Are you sure you don't want to leave? Are you Krista? Yes, I am. Where is Emily Lady? She's right in here. Uh, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm washing the dishes, silly. Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome to our home. I am so sorry about the state of our home right now. My roommate has been having a little bit of a hard time remembering to clean up after herself. Okay, but that is not at all true. First things first. I'm the realist. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, come on. We used to always finish each other's sentences when we first moved in, remember? We never moved in together. This is all her mess, and she doesn't live here. I do. What are you talking about, Rumi? We got into a little disagreement, and now she's trying to kick me out. It's not fair. She's lying. Don't listen to her. I want you gone now. I don't understand. You said that I could live here. Do you have anything that proves you're a resident here? Of course. I mean, what about all the bills I pay? Look, I just got one today. She got that delivered today without even asking me. I found her on the streets. She was pretending to be pregnant and homeless. I invited her to come stay with me and now she won't get out, please. I need you to get her out of here. Krista, relax. Breathe. What did your therapist say? You shouldn't make up stories about people. She likes to fabricate things when she's off her meds. Clearly she's been here for a while, which makes this a civil case, not criminal. What? You're gonna have to take her to court if you want her out. Because she has tenancy rights if you allow her to live here, and she has mail. That's correct. Well, don't you officers worry. We'll work this out like sisters. We always do. <laughs> In the meantime, can I get you anything? Coffee? Tea? We're good, thanks. Please. This is my home. I want her out. There's nothing else we can do. Good night. Good night. Toodles! All right, so uh, why don't you go on and um, finish up the dishes? <laughs> I'll be in the bath if you need me. Oh! <laughs> and if the doorbell rings, answer it. It may be my boyfriend, Timothy. Over my dead body, I'm letting anyone else in this house. <laughs> oh yeah? What are you gonna do? Call the cops? <laughs> this is not happening. <sighs> hey, I need your detective skills. I thought Krista and I were friends. I mean, I look out for her. I help pay the bills. I, I clean the place. That's my home. And I don't understand how she could try to kick me out over a little disagreement. I see. Do you have anything to add to that? Your Honor, everything that she's saying is a complete lie. She hasn't paid any bills. She's a complete slob and she has been manipulating me since day one. 
When I met Emily, she was pretending to be pregnant and homeless. I was taken advantage of. Emily isn't the victim here. I am. Hmm. Do you have any proof of payment, Ms. Stern? Of any rent or any bills? No, I don't. Well then, you have to side with the plaintiff. You have 90 days to pack your things and go. Otherwise, plaintiff can file for eviction. 90 days? According to the rental board, that's how long a non-paying tenant has to vacate. If she's not gone by then, come back to court. You can file for eviction. They're usually granted within 30 days. I I'm sorry, so, so she has 90 days to leave, and if she doesn't, it will take me another 30 to get her out? Correct. Case dismissed. Since we're going to the same place, maybe we should ride together. Rumi. I don't think we're going to the same place. You're going someplace far worse than me. What are you talking about? You heard what the judge said. I have at least four months. And after I pull a few tricks, file for a motion to stay, oh, and claim inhabitability, <laughs> I am going to be good to go for a long time. <laughs> but for once, I'm one step ahead of you, Emily. Or should we say Delaney? How do you know that name? Thanks to my good friend and detective, Jamie, we found out some things about you. You see, after you fooled the cops, I was stressed out trying to figure out a way to know who you really are. That's when Jamie came up with the brilliant idea of checking my Uber account to see where you went that day. Turns out it wasn't the hospital after all. You went to see Timothy. At first, he didn't want to talk to us, but after we offered him a little incentive, he spilled his guts and told us everything about you, including your real name. Turns out this little stunt wasn't your first rodeo. We read stories from so many people that you scammed. We also found out you have a warrant for your arrest and the cops have been looking for you. So we gave them everything they needed on a silver platter. So you see, Delaney, you won't be riding with us. You'll be riding with them. Chauncey looked a little familiar when we came by. We've been looking for you for a long time. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one for you. No, please don't do this. I, I thought you wanted to help me. Isn't that your whole thing, helping people? Yeah, but I realize now there's a difference between helping someone and letting them take advantage of you. I'm done letting you take advantage of me. She may not be your first victim, but she's gonna be your last. I promise you that. Let's go. <laughs> no, stop, please! Well, that was fun. <laughs> I still think we should have done this at the house instead of dragging it to court. Why, now she'll have a criminal record and a civil record. Plus, this was way more fun. Long story short, life took a turn for the worse. And I lost my home. And I lost my job. Because of your addiction. I know that a lot of people like you have that problem. Addiction? No, no, not at all. Right. Uh, OK, well. Can you tell me a little bit more about the challenges that you face by putting yourself in this homeless situation? It is hard to feel safe when you don't have a home to live in and constantly be hungry and worrying about when your next meal is coming. Well, you Never have plenty easy. of handouts, and there's some really good shelters you know, for you. It is not that simple. Uh, all right. Well, OK, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Well, I know everyone has their own struggles, but for me personally, it's that I haven't seen my daughter in a year. <laughs> and it's really hard. Oh, and I just, yes, I yes, just yes. It. Every homeless person has a sob story, you know, like the, um, the dog owner and they can't feed their dog, and <laughs> this goes on and on, et cetera. No, no, I am not lying. Okay, all right, we are done here. We need to wrap it up. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your time. We have enough for our story. <laughs> have a good day.
Honey, I wish they would just get rid of them. Not only are they hard to look at, but they smell awful. You gotta be kidding me. What's wrong? Now they're in our neighborhood. Hey! Can you spare some change? Why don't you get a job like the rest of us? Hey, Jen, let's just take it down the notch. No! Freeloaders like him is what makes our country bad. Now look, I don't want to have to call the police. So would you just leave, please? Sweetheart, you, you didn't have to say that. I don't want him to take advantage of us. If he wasn't so lazy, he wouldn't be in this situation. Well, you don't know what his life is like. It's like saying, don't judge someone before you walk a mile in their shoes. <laughs> he doesn't even have shoes. You know what I mean. Hopefully this is a wake-up call for Governor Newsom to get these drug addicts off of our streets. I'm Jennifer Campbell for Channel 5 News. So, what do you think? It's great, right? This feels subjective. It's coming across more like an opinion piece, which is something our viewers don't want to see. It's missing some real evidence to support everything that you're saying. <laughs> evidence? What are you talking about? It's common knowledge that homeless people are lazy drug addicts, right? I mean, without some real proof? Unfortunately, we can't publish this. <sighs> you're talking about proof. Now, who's next? I can't believe they're putting it on the shelf. And I spent so much time on it. You'll figure something out, I'm sure. You always do. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you mind sparing some of your food? No. Now get away. Please, I I'm really hungry. I'm sure you've had plenty of food freeloading off of paying customers. Look, I actually, I haven't eaten anything today. Sure you haven't. Why don't you go throw yourself a pity party, huh? Thank you so much. You gotta be kidding me. This is what I'm talking about. I wish I had free food. You guys have it so easy. You have no idea how hard it is. Uh -huh. Maybe you should spend a day homeless and see for yourself. Right. Right. I just figured out how to get my story published. Here you go. Are you sure you really want to do this? I mean, there is no way you can walk home from here. Oh, honey, it's only for 24 hours. I'll be back before you know it. Here, take this. Mm, perhaps you want to keep this. What if there is an emergency and you need something? Keep it. I'll be fine. I have to make this look as real as possible. Otherwise, it won't work. I love you so much. I love you too, honey. Please be safe. I will. Hi, I'm Jennifer Campbell for Channel 5 News, Undercover. This is my first hour of being homeless. I don't have any money, and I don't even have a cell phone. But what I do have is a camcorder and a hidden camera. I'm going to prove today that this homeless epidemic is nothing more than a self-inflicted problem created by lazy people. Watch and see how simple this is. Excuse me, um, hi. <laughs> Could you spare some change, please? Oh, hi, ma'am. My name is Jennifer, and I'm really, really hungry. Just, just... Rude. Oh, hi, hi, please stop. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm really, really hungry. And... Hey, we'll go get a job, you bum. Oh, sir, excuse me. I could really use some money.
Hi, sweetheart. Hi. I'm very, very hungry, so when you guys get out of the diner, would you- Please, don't you dare talk to my daughter. Remember I told you about these people? They may look nice, but they are very dangerous. Oh, I'm not dangerous. Okay, please don't talk to us. There's a reason why they're on the streets. Come on. Oh, honey, I'm not dangerous. Oh, sir. Uh, please, I would really appreciate it if you would just let me have some of your leftovers. I haven't eaten all day. Oh, you want this? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. If you want it, you gotta fish it out of the garbage can, you lazy piece of trash. Hey, you. Get going. I don't need you harassing my customers. Oh, I'm not harassing them, sir. You're scaring people off. Now leave before I call the cops. I'm going to a shelter around the corner on Montgomery. I can show you where it is. OK. Great, thank you. You can come on in. So I decided to come to a homeless shelter. Now, it's not the Four Seasons, but at least I'll have food and a bed to sleep in for tonight. One sec. All right, you're good. Hi. Hello. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm homeless and I, I need a bed for tonight. Okay. Can you? Oh, uh, we're full. Sorry, uh, we are at full occupancy. Well, how is that possible? Don't you have 100 beds? Yeah, but there are like a thousand homeless people in the city. I mean, with people losing their jobs because of all the layoffs and people losing their homes because of the rise in housing costs. I mean, it's rough out there. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, um, there's another shelter down on Stewart Street. You can try there. to get a bed for tonight. Didn't you see the sign on the door? Hey! Ah, watch for your oh, boy! I'm so sorry. Oh, you're oh, so sorry. I'm so oh, yeah? sorry. Oh, yeah? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so that was sorry. happening. Hey, hey, break it up. You know our policy, Heidi. No fighting. Go. This is your last warning. Go. <sighs> Heidi, <gasps> go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Does that happen often? You just turn homeless or something, lady? Yes. People get attacked all the time. In the streets, sometimes even in the shelter. And what do the police do? The police, yeah. Good luck getting them to come out here. Please. Just let me in for one night. I'm very tired and I'm very hungry. I really wish I could help you, but there's no exceptions once we're full. Sorry. It's getting dark. Where am I supposed to go? Give us a try tomorrow. No, 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 no. please, please! You better get out of here! Oh my God, officer, please, please. I'm Jennifer Campbell of Channel 5 News. I'm undercover. Please, if you could just give me a ride or your cell phone, please. I need your help. <laughs> Good one, lady. And I'm the Pope. Oh, no, 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 no. 
No, I'm telling the truth. No, I have a camcorder. I have footage. Please. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. Oh, my. Again. Ah! Oh, no, 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 please, please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Please, please don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Get away from her, Heidi. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. She saved my life. Wait. Aren't you that journalist? What, what are you doing? Um, it was a social experiment. I was, I was trying to see what it was like to be homeless and... It is so hard. I don't know how you do it. And I'm so hungry. Will you eat? I'll manage. I also have an extra blanket. I'll just dust it off. Oh. Oh. Who is this little girl? My daughter. The one I told you about. So your story was real. I'm sorry I questioned you. Do you mind me asking what happened to her? I don't like talking about it because I get so choked up, but I'll go ahead and tell you. You see, a few years ago, everything was perfect. My husband, daughter, and I were one small, happy family. But then one day, everything changed. When I woke up in the hospital, I was connected to all these wires and machines. I rushed out to find my family. Thankfully, my daughter survived. But my husband, he wasn't so lucky. I became really depressed. It was hard for me to think about anything else but that accident. and so I'd get fired from every job I'd had. Eventually, we even got kicked out of our apartment. And both my baby girl and I ended up on the street. Life was hard. But the hardest part of all was watching my daughter suffer. So I did the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I put her in the system. So 
So you see, it's been really hard. And I've tried for this past year to get my life back on track. Get my daughter back. But I haven't been able to. There she is. Good luck. Thanks. Hi, Ravina. How are you? Good. Would you like to go for a ride? Sure. I brought you some clothes. Please make yourself at home. And remember what I said. You can stay as long as you need to. Now let me show you your room. Here it is. Oh my gosh. Isabella had this exact same one. How did you know? I didn't. Oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I love you, Mama. Oh, I love you so, so, so much. How did you find her? I'm an investigative journalist. I can find anything. Oh, baby. Uh, you need a shower. <laughs> I'll go get the towels. <laughs> And if there's one thing I've learned from my short time of being homeless, it's that don't judge someone until you walk a mile in their shoes. I'm Jennifer Campbell for Channel 5 News.